So somebody asked me recently why I don't react to some of my old footage and the simple answer is I didn't want to. The more complicated answer is I didn't really want to spend a lot of time and effort going through my old videos, finding some good videos to look at and then reacting. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, mainly because I, whenever I create content, I barely have time to even create it, never mind edit it, go through it, um, curate it, that sort of thing. So that felt like a lot of effort. But also on a personal note, I've changed quite significantly over the last five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And it would be weird for me to look at the person I was back then as in comparison to the person I am now prior to, you know, back then, it, let's say it was 10 years ago, um, having a look at videos of myself pre-therapy, uh, pre kind of self-realization, um, it would have been more painful. But now I, I think I'm in a pretty decent place, which leads me to uh, today's um, video. Uh, essentially, I was uploading some content to the channel and I was changing some descriptions on some other videos and just generally doing a bit of housekeeping. When I accidentally clicked on go to last page of YouTube. Oh, well, not YouTube, YouTube, that would take forever, but go to last page of my uploaded content. So it took me to my first videos, or rather the first videos that are still there. There was a big thing a little while ago where I, I had a bit of a, uh, well, I'll say it, a bit of a breakdown and I just deleted loads of my online content. Um, but of what's there right now, some of it is quite old and I decided to click on one and it's probably cringy enough to make a video out of. So I thought it would be quite weird and funny and enjoyable to have a look at it and record some of my reactions as well. So buckle up, I guess. <laughs> so we're on the channel right now. Um, I'm gonna go to YouTube Studio. This is all of the current content, not that this is spoilery, um, because this will be probably be out way before this is edited because this will take me forever to edit uh, content. Um, you'll notice a distinct pattern with some of my videos um it, basically i upload them i stick them on private and then i completely forget about them uh, hence why i've still got last year's horror streams on here um, but if i go all the way down to the bottom and i click on next page oh there was a last page button well now i just need to go back i'm not 100 sure how i got to last page it was there a minute ago <laughs> I'm looking at some of the uh, some of the um, things on the side. Here we go. So this is the last page. So we've got hardware review published in 18th of August 2012. So yeah, over 10 years ago. Um, 7,564 views. Wow. Four comments. <laughs> That's synonymous with this channel. Let's have a let's have a look at this. Let's go here. Let's hope it opens. Ooh, okay. Pause real quick. <laughs> Firstly, cinema mode. <laughs> Secondly, oh, let's just uh, forward that a little bit. That aspect ratio is golden. That four by three aspect ratio. Mwah, absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah, slimgamer.com. This is back when I worked for slimgamer.com. Now dead and buried website and powered by beast rig also a dead and buried company um <laughs> no connection i've got to admit but yeah let's see let's see how it starts oh just before i go wow that <laughs> that resolution they i think i used to put these together in windows movie maker that was that was my editor of choice Hello everyone and welcome to the Gadget Corner here on SlimGamer.com. Wow. I am Mike Smith and today I'm going to be taking a look at Seagate's latest invention, the Backup Plus. Seagate's latest invention, the Backup Plus. Basically it's a hard drive, a 500 gig hard That's drive um, that allows you to keyboard, save, automatically yes. save and backup photos from social media. And it's a pretty exciting concept. I know a lot of people who have uh, actually got Facebook accounts and Flickr accounts and stuff like that, simply for the photos that are on there. So uh, yeah, this so is basically young. going to be uh, going to be me uh, showing you what's inside the box. Go on then, 
show us what's inside the box. This is a stellar unboxing video. To be fair, right, just pause that a second. To be fair, my unboxing game has never gotten any better. <laughs> Genuinely has never, never improved. Just the quality of the camera. Over here. So what have we got? We've got the service warranty. All important. Put that somewhere safe. Uh, the quick start guide, Put that which is safe. actually quite the informative. Bin. It's got uh, helpful little pictures to uh, show you what to do. It couldn't be easier, really. You basically, just plug it in and uh, it, it does what it needs to do. <clears throat> but we'll go into further detail on that soon. We've got the uh, bespoke USB cable, which I'll go into in a second, and the actual devices. It's not bespoke. <laughs> stuff. So let's have a quick look. It's not a. Uh, it's worth mentioning. It's not a heavy device. It's actually uh, no heavier than, let's say, a Samsung Galaxy uh, Samsung Galaxy phone. That was quite nice. Samsung Galaxy Phone, no, no style, no number, no make or model, just Samsung Galaxy Phone. I'm ripping this apart because I, I would still make the same mistakes, I'll be honest with you. Um, but just... So it's not an imposing device is, either. It's not uh, especially I mean, in big. Fairness, this is the best or, I know, There's no uh, external power supply um, or anything like that. It's USB powered. It is USB so, uh, powered. So that's it. That's the Seagate uh, Yeah, I'm going to turn it down to a smidge. Gig model. This was this was the best I could do. I was on a webcam. I think it was a webcam USB on a tripod at the very least, but I had no way of monitoring it. USB so I literally, there's cable. some shots where I'm just going to be like holding stuff up to the camera, USB sort of three. like this, the where I'm like, inside. I think and that's where I need to hold it. Yeah, SS like this. USB, <laughs> there's a lot of guesswork involved like here. A USB and a uh, micro USB so let's go cable to, uh, terabyte and uh, if you've got more than one terabyte ooh, desktop so terabyte that sort of thing <coughs> so oh, you've also got that, sorry I'll just go back there uh, drive uh, your oh that that windows windows background this might have been my last windows machine to be honest with you what time is that 3.39 p.m. excellent stuff uh, CPU usage can't really, oh, AVG, I had antivirus and everything. Uh, this was a contractual obligation to have the, it, whenever uh, we had PC um, stuff, <laughs> stuff, whenever we had PC related content that we were recording for the channel, for the website, we had to have Beast Rig's Scratch logo on the, on the background. Windows PC should have automatically recognized it as a mass storage device, so... I am echoing. Yep. So, essentially, in order to install the correct software, uh, it's already bundled onto the hard drive, which is quite helpful, as well as uh, quite a number of uh, tutorial videos. Uh, sorry, I'll just go back there. Um, so, on your My Computer, just go to the Seagate Backup Plus, and the installer you need is right there Seagate Dashboard Installer. So, obviously, I've already had that installed, so uh, that now leaves this icon on your desktop so if you double click on this this will yeah, your data for this? one terabyte how much it costs I'm, as a, a few gig consumer, for I'm not bored. files account my uh, basic account which log in wow. very, but the Facebook Flicker. account I've already uh, assigned to mine Flicker. and also the YouTube account now assigning your accounts assigning these buttons to your accounts is very very simple it's basically like any app, uh, but they were basically in my uh, I say basically a lot I don't think that's changed selected. I think now I say About essentially more. 13 to 14 minutes. There you go. Oh, oh so this mine, is oh, glorious. Let's just Facebook wall. dox myself so with... Uh, cancel out of this. Am I showing my actual Facebook page You can then here? see on my Facebook wall, oh. on my timeline, about five hours ago, testing the Seagate Backup yeah, Plus, yeah. and I just put comments, comments, comments. So, you see that they're all Brilliant. there. Brilliant. <laughs> well done, Mr. Cybersecurity. Put a description in. Um, you can't put. A I bit do remember the outcome of a shame. This. I remember the pictures. These, not these are being taken straight, policy. straight from Facebook. This is the Facebook backup. So, as you saw from the uh, the beginning of the video, it's manual, but it is. Uh, where is it? There it is. In the world, and obviously, if you zoom in, you just lose quality completely. And just to give you, you a bit of an example. Oh yeah, you do. Obviously, obviously you're able to see the difference. <laughs> Pan to the corner between those two right there. Wow. One of my say, so, first hardware reviews. Yeah, one of my unfortunately, that, that is a bit of a letdown with the, um, uh, with the Seagate back.
it's one of my earlier hardware reviews. <laughs> so that's a thing. Where am I now? I got some test footage from a camera. The Curiosity Cube. Does anybody remember the Curiosity Cube? Um, 2,000 subscribers. Let's, let's, let's watch the 2,000 subscribers one. Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching this little video. My name is Mike Smith. You might know me as that Mike Smith from both my channel title up there and also from my Twitter username. Now, it was recently pointed out to me that I crossed a bit of a milestone in regards. <laughs> There's no emotion in my face. That was a free hat, though. I, I, I really liked that hat. That got bleached by the sun. Um, and those glasses don't fit. You, it's pinching my head really badly. You can see at the sides of my head, it's pinching my head really badly. To subscribers on my YouTube channel. And I actually passed 2,000 recently. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to every single person who's clicked subscribe. Wow. I was not... What are you thinking? <laughs> don't encourage me. But anyway... I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. I really do appreciate it. The YouTube videos have gone from something I used to do as a bit of an aside to something I'm pouring more and more effort into. And now they're basically, other than my freelance stuff, they're what I put the most effort into. Um, and I really appreciate people's feedback in regards to it. Now, granted, a while ago I did disable the YouTube comments section for damn good reasons, even prior to the Google Plus integration. But... Google that is because I find the YouTube comment section to be an unholy place of scum and villainy. Um, <laughs> not unlike Moss Eisley, to be perfectly honest, from Star Wars. Moss Eisley from Star Wars, just, the fact just for the context there, just like in case it, you didn't and know. And a number of people tell me on Twitter that I'm doing a good job, because it's much easier for people to say I'm doing a terrible job than it is to give me positive feedback. And if people can't instantly and quickly give me negative feedback, they usually don't bother. Yeah. They usually either click the little down thumb icon or they just click away take. from my channel and i'm fine with that if they don't if it's not for them then it's not oh, that's, that's a bit difficult to watch i was a i was a completely different person at this point um yeah i hadn't grown a neck apparently and uh, that was a thing but seriously i i was i was not kind of uh, when was this this was eight years ago so this would have been 2004 no 2014 not 2004 2014 yeah, 2014. So this wasn't this wasn't long. I think after we'd moved, which is a bit weird. Let's go back. What other ones have we got? <laughs> My renewed love of twin stick shooters. I remember making this because I remember playing. Where is it? Android Assault Cactus, which is right here. Um, and then uh, remembering that I enjoyed twin stick indie garden. Does anybody remember the indie garden? Good grief. This was a this is a screaming joypad thing. Uh, not screaming joypad. This is a slim gamer thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an episode of the Indie Garden with me, Mike Smith. Now, today I'm going to be playing a game called King Voxel, as you can tell by the neon glowing voxel letters on the screen in front of me. This is currently on Kickstarter, and it's an alpha demo, which I don't know if you can see at the bottom. Data here. Slightly difficult to see that, but yeah. Unfortunately, it supports uh, Xbox 360 joypad, so I'm not going to have to play this game with a mouse and keyboard because, quite frankly, that's really difficult, and you'll see why in a second or two. So, I'm going to jump in right now. Uh, as you no can face see, I've, cam. I've played this a couple of times already, and as you can also see, that mic, I'm that mic's very far with it. The hubris. So, I'm going to create another player because I'm bored, to be perfectly honest. Uh, what do we call him? Let's, let's call him. Let's call him Link because this references. Let's skip forward a bit. How does it look? How does it play? Come on, give me um, a. An art gallery where backers can have their pieces of art put on the wall. It's a nice idea, but this entire bit. Happy birthday, apparently. Happy birthday. There you go. Whoever Happy birthday, Philip Mayer. Hope you had a good one. Oh, that is, that's called Happy Birthday. Isn't oh. It? Okay. <laughs> but it took me a while to figure out that there was nothing else in that. This is so Not surreal. Which really bloody annoys me. Um, wow. It's, it's horrifying. I don't, I don't like 
first person. This is like Minecraft, but not like Minecraft at the same time. This is like the the Minecraft version of Purgatory. <laughs> Minecraft version of Purgatory. I mean, I had I had good skills back then. Oh, I was I was good at my words. All the tall. I don't I don't understand why. It's not that I'm not hitting them because you can see my sword just pass straight over them. <laughs> I remember this was a frustrating game. I also remember this was around the time I, think it's the I was fault. absolutely I just, just spewing out content, and this is this is one of the reasons why ages ago I um I disabled lots of my videos, and I actually think you can see it if I go back a second to the second to last page, um it might be one of one of these oh, the brutal truth oh man that was a that was a good series that i uh i never pushed any effort into my preview of bloodborne lone survivor that was it lone survivor so it was around 2014 that uh i started suffering from burnout and this is probably an uh a, 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 key example as to uh hello everybody and welcome to episode two of my lone survivor let's play my name is mike smith and if you remember from the previous episode which should be on the channel now um well i hope it's on the channel now because this is the second episode um that we got into a reasonably good position last time on lone survivor i uh, i met the director we uh, got some got some good drugs and we kitted out our kitchen with some new stuff so yeah we're probably going to uh, going to continue from where we left off. We'll just make sure everything's still here, because there's no real confirmation that you've got an actual save game in Lone Survivor. Um, All credits Lone Survivor. I Lone Survivor's pretty fucking awesome game. Cool. Don't get yeah, me wrong. That's fine. Okay, cool. So, dum de dum de dum de dum. What was I doing? What was I doing? What was I doing? Oh, I'm on expert mode, aren't I? Oh God. Right. Okay. So. I think it has something to do with the woman in the dress. We've got to go back to where the woman in the dress was. I can't remember where that was. So I'm going to go back to my mirror. And <laughs> this is totally not true. Now I'm going to expose a um, uh, a, a thing from, from myself here. So I was uh, creating um, content as much as possible. I, was, I basically had it in myself that I had to do uh, Let's Play episodes, but I had to do them like 15 minutes at a time and I had to do as many as I possibly could. So I think this episode one, two, and then we've got three and four here, they were all done in the same day. So they were all recorded in the same day. And I, I had just made out like... Um, Oh, yeah, well, now we're back playing Lone Survivor for the second episode. Now we're back playing Lone Survivor. Oh, I don't remember what I'm doing. I don't remember what I'm... What, what what am I doing? No, none of that was true. That was absolute BS, and I will call past Mike out on that because I wanted four chunks of content that felt fresh and felt like... Um, uh, felt like a continuation, but felt like I'd done them on separate days, basically. But, yeah, that was not a great not a great time in my life because i was just um oh bound by flame bug video i'll have a look at that in a second uh yeah it's kind of hard to watch some of this because it's um it reminds me of just how much i was suffering from mental health issues back then and how little i understood how much i was suffering from mental health issues back then but now i look back on it yeah i wasn't in a I wasn't in the greatest place in the world. Um, I do remember this, though. So I, I can date uh, the Castlevania 2 Laws of Shadow Review. I can date uh, certain life events. I want my name based, is Pause. Based on um, <laughs> video game releases because I was, a, I was a game journalist for 10 years. And uh, this came out. We had we were living in a house where we had mold on one of the walls. And we had a builder come round and basically, so on the Sunday night, a builder came around and essentially told us that he's starting Monday morning. He is going to be 
stripping off all of the downstairs wall in order to to fix it and that took about two weeks and for those two weeks we had to have no kitchen no living room and no downstairs essentially myself my wife and our two cats um we all had to basically live upstairs in the bedroom and i just remember we lived on like microwave meals because we we had no cooker we had no fridge the fridge was plugged in in the di- corner of the dining room and um, we had no washing machine because we couldn't plumb it in nothing it was pretty horrific but it was horrific in one of those like i'm gonna guess it's how people see like the war and the old like the second world war and the blitz and stuff like that where they're just like oh yeah it was a time of our life there's a certain nostalgia i have that not for the event or for the time around it but for our um kind of determination around it and to make the the most of it if that makes it to sort of make make it a, a nice experience and to to uh, not let it be like the worst thing in the world and during that time i was blitzing through castlevania laws of shadow 2 because i was reviewing it a review copy for um sent to me by uh, konami studios so yeah konami maybe you could email me back about silent hill the first thing you'll notice in regards to castlevania lords of shadow 2 or just lords of shadow 2 as i'll probably call it from now on because it's easier is the fact that everything looks very very similar to lords of shadow 1 now slight spoiler alert if you've not completed lords of shadow 1 i'd probably go and do that now because there's going to be some aspects of this like the ending of lords of shadow 1 <laughs> that will become some very aspects massive spoilers ahead Two leads on almost directly from Lords of Shadow 1. Now, at the end of Lords of Shadow 1, you defeated Satan and you wrecked. And Konami even might be missing is the fact that this game is a pretty successful reboot of the entire Castlevania franchise. Still true. And I, I say I that like as that. a Castlevania fan. I still believe that. Um, I was honestly expecting a pretty weak sequel with pretty substandard combat systems and you are now i do Dracula. remember you... um that the uh entire internet decided that i was completely wrong about this this may have been one of the reasons why i turned off uh, comments actually this video um because i i got a lot of hate for this video because i really liked it and i said it was really good and everyone was like oh actually it's rubbish and there's a forced stealth sequence that's absolutely unplayable it's not unplayable it's bad don't get me wrong but it's not unplayable um and yeah because i enjoyed it i was like oh you're a fanboy and you're oh, on the take for konami and all this sort of stuff i'm like i'm just i'm just having a different opinion than the majority so fair enough <laughs> uh what's my bound by flame i remember bound by flame being a horrendous game and I had to review it. Um, it might even be on here somewhere. Oh no, I think I couldn't review it. I got like 10 hours in or something like that. And I hit a bug and the developers asked me to send them a video. And I think- I think I'm at Spiders. My name is Mike Smith. And this is my video to explain the somewhat large bug that I'm I even, found in regards to Bound by Flame. I'm even sending developers YouTube videos like I'm developing a YouTube video. Same. As you can see here, I'm at the uh, chapter 2, The Evil Eye, I'm in the Lair of Whispers, I have uh, Edwin in my party. Um, this section I was actually going to try and show you how long I'd been playing for, which is about 11 and a half hours. Um, but unfortunately the capture on the PlayStation 4 doesn't capture the actual uh, HUD, it doesn't capture the um, dashboard, it just captures the gameplay, which is fine. So I've already been killed by the fl- This is before I could capture consoles. <laughs> This is way before any of that. Flying winged creature, um, but now the cutscene to actually activate it doesn't doesn't activate anymore. So what I'm going to do is, if you need to see my equipment or my items or anything, you can flick back the, through the video and have a quick look. You can freeze frame it. So I'm going to. So what should? So this is a two and a half minute video, which is about 15 seconds long. Um, what should happen is this. There should be a boss here, basically like a winged demon. Um, the flapping you can hear in the background is the demon essentially t posing. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fast forward. There we go. There it is. That's flapping the boss. away, and 
Yeah. It's also completely impervious to being interacted with, I assume because it's not triggered yet. So I don't know if it's a case of the actual trigger line has become... There's, there's, there's me trying to give them advice like I know what I'm talking about because I've played video games before and I, I used to use the Tomb Raider um, level editor when I was a teenager. So I'm just like, oh yeah, maybe the, maybe the trigger line hasn't been, hasn't been activated yet. I don't know what I'm talking about. With the uh, yeah, it's not nothing, you know, nothing I could do here. And I, I played 11 and a half hours of it and then lost my save and then was like, not reviewing that anymore. <laughs> Actually, that's not true, it's that I couldn't review it as far as I'm aware. I couldn't review it anymore because I didn't have 11 and a half hours to um to uh spend on it. This was probably one of my favorite um previews that i used to do uh lords of the fallen not a great game but i went to a a preview event in london i was invited to a preview event in london to um go and have a look at it so for those of you who don't know lords of the fallen is a third person all action over adventure the place. game created by ci games who are better known for making the sniper ghost warrior games and however there's a distinct jump in sound quality there and this makes me wonder if i've gone from I can't remember what I used to use as a microphone. I used a Blue Yeti for the longest time, like the longest time. And I don't know if before this point, for this video, this is the one I, like this is around the time frame I bought the Blue Yeti, or rather my wife convinced me to buy the Blue Yeti. Thank you. I've always been thankful for that. Um, but yeah, this might be around the time that my wife convinced me to buy a Blue Yeti microphone. So... And less for making a game that resembles the love child of Dark Souls and Darksiders. I spent some time recently in a super secret location in London Town to play roughly four hours of Lords of the Fallen, so I'm here to tell... Super secret location? It was under a pub. <laughs> ...all you lovely fine people about it. My name is Mike Smith, and this is my exclusive preview of Lords of the Fallen. So what is Lords of the Fallen? Well, I was so edgy. Like I mentioned, it's a third person action adventure game set in a world where no sin is ever forgotten. After defeating and banishing their god from the human realm, if somebody ever committed a crime, they were branded with a rune on their face and then thrown in prison for the rest of their life. Fast forward a number of years and an army of demons led by a cabal known only as the Lords are invading god, and with this, this peaceful idyllic society, this nobody knows scene. how to fight back or even swing a sword. So Harkin, our main character is released from prison by a mysterious I'll just maid. mute this a second they they absolutely adored this bit because you could make the enemy fall through the floor and yeah they they lauded that a lot like oh completely interactable environments um that's a handsome dude uh i wonder why i think that um yeah there, there was a there was a big kind of there's completely destructible environments uh, not completely destructible but there's sections of the game where you can use the environment to your advantage there was two i think and they were, they were really hard to trigger uh but i remember this being just very just clunky and i really wanted to enjoy it and i i was at the preview event and I got lost at one point, and not at the preview event, I mean in the game. Um, I got lost at one point, and I didn't know where I was going, and someone was like, oh, have you beat this person? I'm like, yes. And I'm like, have you beat this person? I'm like, yes. And I'm like, oh, um, then that should have worked. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it's glitched. Right. Uh, I also got a lot of, this got, um, this was probably one of my, my biggest viewing videos. This got 6,000 views, um, and I was I was under this because this was a preview now this this made me realize that uh, pre-release footage was important um so yeah it was one of those kind of um eye-opening moments for me <clears throat> excuse me but i got a lot of people saying like oh did you capture your own footage i'm like no i don't have the ability to and they're like oh then it's it's garbage this entire review is garbage. It's not even... I don't even think they, they attended the event. They're just lying and they've just gotten... But you were given this footage. Like, like you were given this raw footage on a USB stick. And that was... Like, the only way you got this footage uh, was was through physically being handed it. Um, 
but yeah they never uh the, the i didn't have the funding or the ability to capture gameplay footage at all unfortunately so that's Lords of the Fallen. I have fond memories of Lords of the Fallen. Uh, that that was when I started to think, you know, maybe maybe this is a this is a real thing, and maybe this is something that I can uh, I can um, pour some more effort into. Far Cry Four live stream on demand, part two, part one nowhere to be seen. <laughs> uh, the golf club live stream on demand. <laughs> oh my god. This is the dumbest, dumbest video I've ever made, and it's my second highest rated one. It was this stupid dance video from Destiny. Basically, oh God, I'm, I'm going to tell that right down, otherwise I'll get copyright claimed. Um, it was a, uh, the, a band called The Death Blossoms um, released a version of Sexy and I Know It, so I stuck that in a timeline, and I was like, do you know what? I'm going to capture some footage of me dancing or other people dancing in the Destiny beta build. And uh, I'm going to... This was this took me six minutes to make this, like, two and a half minute video, if that. It took longer to export it than it did to make it. Um, and it got 21,000 videos. And that's when I sort of thought to myself, God, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> What else we got? Road Not Taken? That's a good game. Um, let's go back again. Ooh, the Layers of Fear ones. That's that's a good that's a good series that no one will ever see. <laughs> um Oh Brutal Truth, there we go. Uh, I you you're getting your first promo code. <laughs> the gaming for Trinity. Wow, oh, excellent. Look at that. Vlogs. Yeah, let's have a look at the vlog. The Gaming for Trinity vlog. Wow. I, I'm a handsome man there. And today this video is a little bit different than normal. Now you'd usually expect to see my face kind of squashed up into the corner. This trigger warning is about, I think, my mum passing away from cancer. Not at this point in my life, but this is, this is when I wanted to do something about it. Hence, Gaming for Trinity, because I wanted to... Um, raise money for the Trinity Hospice in Blackpool, uh, which is where she passed away. I'm being quite cynical about what I'm playing. Today I'm making this video to make everybody aware of a special event I'm putting on. That's right, I'm going to be playing video games it's on live music in a 24 hour period and I want each and every one of you to join in. It'll be great, don't worry about it, I'll put a buffet on, it'll be fine. So why am I doing <laughs> This is so scripted. This, well, <laughs> that's where things take a slightly more serious tone. Now, I've never really gone into much personal stuff in my YouTube channel, um, basically because I like a certain degree of privacy in my life, and also because I, like I don't a certain really degree like of privacy a lot of in my life. I literally had my Facebook profile on YouTube for, <laughs> for ages because of a review. You freaking idiot! About myself to be out there in the ether, sort of thing. Now, contextually speaking, that kind of needs to change a little bit here. So, when I was about 12 or 13 years old, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Now, things didn't go well, unfortunately, and she passed away quite quickly after that. And through the whole ordeal, I've only really got slightly fragmented memories. Kind of like my brain was trying to shield me from the pain of what happened, but kind of blocked out some stuff and not others. That's very true. That my brain went into defense mode um, when I... Uh was about 12 or 13 because mum passed away and I just went completely emotionally numb um, and it's only recently I've started to revisit that I say recently within the last few years started to revisit that in therapy sessions and I can now actually talk about it one of the things I do remember though is the hospice where she was taken care of during her final days now I'm not specifically speaking about oh isn't this a nice table sort of a thing but when you've gone from a few hospitals to a few hospitals in a very short period of time Everything kind of starts to feel very similar. It's very rushed staff taking care of very impatient patients. And the whole thing starts to feel like a bit of a process rather than actual healthcare. No, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against people who work in healthcare. I think they do an absolutely fantastic job. But the people at the hospice where my mum was taken care of, Trinity, they were above and beyond. They, they did everything they could to help us. I guess they kind of understood that a lot that's enough for me right now. Um, so yeah, uh, let's switch to some gameplay footage um, and mute this. 
So this was the announcement for my um, uh, gaming fraternity event. Charity fundraiser. There we go. Those are the words I'm looking for. And this was oh, Outlast. Um, this was uh, also the moment when I was asked to join the GOG stream team as well, which is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed doing this. I really enjoyed doing this. I've done a, a couple of charity events in the past. Um, and, yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not upset because of the content. I'm upset because I can see how blocked emotionally that mic is and this was only seven years ago so i can see just how not processing it how much non-processing is going on behind that face and that's that's really wow <laughs> glad i don't make posters um yeah, uh, I can see how, how difficult it is for him to understand that. And I say this like this is a completely different person. It is a completely different person in my mind um, because I'm nowhere near who that person was. Uh, let's go back. And that's a good point, actually. Let's just go to... Um, is this going to search just my videos? This is just going to search my videos, isn't it? What would be good is... Oh no. <laughs> mm, delicious content. Oh, this, is, <laughs> this was a while ago, wasn't it? Uh, when was Gogcast? Gogcast. The Gog.com podcast. Episode one. When was this? Six years ago. So this was just after that point. So let's go. Now I have mixed mixed emotions and feelings about this podcast. I mean, it's off to a stellar start. Have I pressed play? Yeah, I pressed play. Does it does it actually come on? I want to do it right now, but uh, anyway, um, yeah. So basically, I think when for the glory it, oh, is yeah. a game that you want to really seek if you want to play the best. Of I was so nervous when this aired live. Streaming woes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boyos and girls alike. Jesus. It is Thursday. It is 9 p.m. GM. Oh, check your audio levels, mate. Oh, my days. You just blew my eardrums out. That beard, though. Whoa. Which means it is time to air our very first episode of the GOG.com podcast, or as we're going to affectionately call it from now on, the GOGcast. Right now. Camera game needs upgrading, microphone game needs upgrading, lighting. That green screen is just a sheet. And also, I wasn't using it, so I may as well have just taken it down. Because there was a blank wall behind me that I could have I could have had up instead. But all the cool streamers had green screens behind them, so I had blue... I had green sheeting. <laughs> Before continuing... I'm going to forward so good to back. Some, my old, uh, some of my old colleagues there. Mega Pie Man, Outstar, Memories in 8-Bit. I have um, I have mixed feelings about the people I used to work with at Gocom. I must admit, uh, for various different reasons, and also reasons I um, have explained in the past, and also reasons I will never explain. But um, one of the things I do remember is doing the actual uh, show was so much fun. Like, the actual show itself was just so much fun. I, I don't think I've laughed as much as when we were recording this. And I, miss, I do miss it. I'm not going to lie. I definitely do miss it. But I am um, I'm, I'm a much different person than I was then. Uh, and I think if it would to ever happen again, it would be a completely different beast. It would be a better version, but a completely different beast. So that's it. That's that's what I got basically. Um, I wanted to uh, watch some old uh, YouTube videos, so I have done, and it's weird to be honest with you. It's it's really weird to to go back and have a look at some of the old footage and 
see who I used to be and see how I used to talk. And yeah, there's a lot of, I think the, the best way of putting it is it feels a lot more natural now to create content like this and create VR content and gaming content. Whereas previously I felt like everything had to be scripted down to the micro detail and then edited within an inch of its life. And that's not necessarily true. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I've enjoyed it and maybe we'll do something like this again in the future. Maybe go through the Twitch archive, who knows? So yeah, take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.